Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. It's Kim and my co-host. Grandma Gail. Okay, we're answering some listener questions. Someone said, what are your favorite women's clothing boutiques? Uh, I, I guess, I, I, would it be, I, I think I love Zadig Voltaire. Mm-hmm. I love Theory because I love their pants. I think they're terrific. Uh, you love uh, Revolve because you love to go yeah, online. You, I love Revolve. I like like Intermix, Reformation, And now Zara. you're buying a lot of stuff on Amazon, mm-hmm. which you love, which your mom has even been using, and they're terrific. Um, so I think we have a lot of different ones. Yeah. Okay, some more life-related ones. Number one regret. Well, if I have to think about it, probably the number one regret I have is that I didn't go to law school. But by the time that was, uh, uh, I guess my mother and father didn't encourage it. And uh, I guess I had a family and got over it. Uh, someone said, what has been your most profitable investment? Uh, my most profitable investment uh, it, it are certain stocks that I've invested in and um, for many, many years, uh, one being J.P. Morgan. <laughs> uh, okay, two dating ones. Should a couple split the rent when living together or should the guy pay more slash all? Well, I think that question, Kim, depends on the finances of the of the couple. Uh, I don't think you can generalize on this. Mm-hmm. If if the man is comfortable, I think, and and it's his apartment uh, first, and you're moving in with him, he should pay for it, and perhaps you pay uh, your share of the of the food costs if you want. Um, it really is the dynamic of the couple. Yeah. You can't generalize on this. Some some men would be offended if you even discuss that. Um, and then on the other hand, some women make more than men. So if the woman is the uh, basic uh, financial um, supporter, then maybe she should pay for it. It, it really is very that individual. I know who like chose an apartment together that they were both moving into, you know, versus one moving in with the right. other who already right. has an apartment or whatever. Most of those people I know do divide the rent, not equally, but like they're both paying okay. the landlord in some way. But okay. I agree that it definitely depends. I, I certainly wouldn't move in with somebody who couldn't afford to keep me. Yeah, that's fair. That, that would be me, but that's another generation. What to do if a guy tries to make it sexual too soon? Oh, nothing. Just say, you know what? It's a little, be honest. Say, I'm not ready for this yet. Uh, Can we hold off on it? And if he says no, then he's not for you. Um, Yeah, I agree. I mean, you have to be honest with yourself if it like kind of weirds you out. Or if, it, um, if it's forced. It's got to be a really a natural kind of sequence. Yeah. Like you can't really blame someone because maybe that felt natural for them to start something at that point with you. But I think like there's always ways to prolong it. And if they are not sticking around for the ride, like bye. So this week we have on Sophie St. Thomas. She's a journalist. Um, she writes about sex, drugs, rock and roll. That includes CBD, which we'll get into. And she's also a sex witch. And she does magical spells. <laughs> and that, that alone, I wanted to talk to her on this podcast. Okay. I think we need to, to see what that really is. Exactly. I'm not quite sure. I understand what the CBD might be. Right. And there's all this talk now about legalizing in different Correct. states and like the difference between... Like, medical marijuana i guess and recreational yeah and like when when does it have psychoactive properties like cbd doesn't al- always mean that it has thc in it right so i guess i i've never had any of it but i certainly would like to try it i'd like to chill out on it maybe one day but it has to be legalized right you've used cream CBD yeah but cream, the cream yes not i have like done that a weed gummy or yeah, smoking no i haven't yeah. done it i've used the Your cream and life? actually it didn't even work Right. And I, I didn't do, do and I didn't do marijuana in the 60s and 70s when a lot of my friends did. Yeah, how did you avoid that? Oh god, I was changing diapers. Oh, so I really didn't I, and and I guess I didn't want to <laughs> interfere in that fabulous routine. Yeah. I mean, nowadays so many people it's just part of their lives. Yeah, like, well, I think they have to chill out more. I mean, I I didn't think about chilling out. You know, we had responsibilities and we took it seriously and I guess I was so young I missed the whole I missed that whole phase. So, uh, maybe I'd like to try it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I will say like I've done it and it has not made me chill out at all. Oh, it depends like, I feel on like your physique. Like, and then each person has yeah. a different reaction. Yeah. So we'll talk about all of that with Sophie. Hope you enjoy. So guys, we are joined by Sophie St. Thomas. She's a New York City based journalist and author originally from the US Virgin Islands. And she's published basically everywhere that you've ever read GQ, Playboy, Cosmo, Forbes, Glamour, Self, and more. Thank you for joining us, Sophie. Thank you for having me. Oh, and I should say you're the author of three books. And I want to hear your kind of path into writing those. But first, let's start with your age, your relationship status, and where you're from. Well, like you said, I grew up in the Caribbean, but I've been in New York City since 2010. I am 34 and I am living with a partner. And so how did you start on this path? I know your books are both about CBD and also um, being a sex witch, which we have lots of questions on what that means. And I'm excited to get into it. But how did you start on this path of being a writer? I have always been a writer. I did TV production in high school and then turned up my local news station. And then I studied journalism in college and mostly wrote about music then. Got a little pushback from my editors at the time with some of the sex content I wanted to write about. But then when I moved to New York City, my first bylines were with Vice here. And at the time I had a day job in television and I gradually made the leap to a full-time writer. Awesome. So great. And the CBD, are you a proponent of it? Do you like it? I mean, what is your, because I've had some experience with it. Mine wasn't so positive. It wasn't negative, but it really didn't do what I thought it was going to do. Uh, well, I have one book about CBD. I have two books about cannabis in general. I am, CBD can work wonderful for people. I personally, as I've been a medical patient since 2013, and I definitely go for the full spectrum, whole plant, THC, CBD, all of it combined. I'm a big believer in the entourage effect, which means that things work better when everything, all the cannabinoids are in conjunction together. CBD is an isolate derived from hemp. The amount of hemp plants it takes to make a little bit of CBD is bad for the environment. And I hear a lot of people like you say things like, oh, I tried CBD and didn't have that much of an experience. It is my professional and personal opinion that once we're able to legalize federally and make this from whole plant cannabis, we'll be able to give people a much better experience. And it is a large concern of mine, to be honest, that some of these hemp drive CBD products aren't doing much and people are going to experience that. And then when we do go full legal and are really able to make some of the better quality stuff available, people are going to already have a judgment about it. Mine was a cream actually that, that somebody brought me uh, for my, uh, it was for muscle pain, whatever. And I, you know, I used it, I used it and, and it just didn't give me what you're saying. I guess the full strength of what your products that you believe in will do. I I hope you're right. Yeah. I have, I've had some luck with topicals. It's great for anti, it's an anti-inflammatory cannabis is that's the basis for a lot of the medical claims. Like I get tendonitis mostly from writing, which is inflammation of the, of the tendons. And I do experience some luck. I found putting topical on the inflamed area but um, then again, I do get my topical from a medical dispensary. So probably much stronger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you're putting cream on, you're not no. going to feel high. No, but a lot no, of people, no. a lot of people, I think, get confused about no. it. Well, certainly I didn't feel high. <laughs> I didn't feel anything. I felt a little tingling in your back, you know, mm-hmm. where you were, or wherever you're putting it. And it was but it, it didn't work for me. Um, but uh, like Sophie is saying, I think it, it depends on the strength and the mm-hmm. quality of it. Um, yeah, all this you're not, you're not going into a marijuana stupor from yeah. from rubbing a little cream on right. yourself. No, you need to you need a mucous membrane for any psychoactive effect. So the only actual way to get any psycho effect from a topical, even if it does um, contain THC, is either to eat it, and also you might have seen, and this is kind of crossing over into my sex writing cannabis suppositories and cannabis pleasure oils on the mucous membranes of the anus and the vagina. If it's absorbed through there, there can be a mild psychoactive effect if it's made with whole plant cannabis flower with THC. But if you're just using CBD, especially hemp drive CBD there, there's going to be no psychoactive component to it. 
So you kind of write about how CBD can be an aphrodisiac. How does that um, work? Well, I think for me, cannabis can be an aphrodisiac. Okay. I, yeah, full like a cannabis can be an af aphrodisiac. Let's see, like THC dosed responsibly I can really lower your inhibitions, but it doesn't make you black out in the same way that alcohol can. So if there is certain fantasies or you know role-playing situations you might want to explore with your, your partner i found that for a lot of people it can be easier to open up about that that's a huge thing um i find the topicals especially suppositories really useful for reducing maybe a little bit of pain from intercourse that can happen there's also studies that show that when dosed you know enough to make you feel something but not way way too much that cannabis enhances creativity. And this can be really, really fun in the bedroom when you're having sex and coming up with new ideas and being silly. And a lot of people just, you know, when they feel good, when they feel euphoric, when their senses are heightened, you know, and cannabis also enhances the senses. It's why music can sound better, art can look trippier, people get into music when and if you take too much, it can, I know for a lot of people make you feel kind of anxious and paranoid, but I found that as someone with an anxious disposition, the right amount really helps me be fully present and fully in my body. And so those are a lot of the reasons why I think it's really fun for sex. Makes sense to me. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I think I'm too old to try it. So no, is I that, I, I mean, Sophie, tell us, like, is there an age for, for this kind of stuff? I don't think so. No, no. I Cer cer certainly they're not not medically with, with the, the <laughs> yes whether the desires they are after right. yeah <laughs> That's I fair. think we'll keep it for the young well we'll see um so you call yourself a sex witch um what does that mean well I say that a, that a witch is someone who is aware of their personal power and not afraid to use it I have had the benefit of growing up in a way where I didn't have any religious influence, which meant that I don't really have a lot of sexual shame. So I think one of the reasons why I've always, why, why I have done well writing about sex is that I don't really have any hangups about it. Sex magic specifically is something that occultists describe as using your sexual energy to manifest a specific goal. Um, that's most historically seen in like Aleister Crowley and kind of these uh, secret society orgies that are have become a little bit legendary and we'll never know the details of but sex which there is sex magic in it but there's also using tarot to find the right relationship format for you it's really just using witchcraft and spirituality to help people find ways to access and understand their sexuality in a way that they'll feel comfortable with, understand better, and just get to really live their best self. And do you believe that you can, this is sort of a relationship podcast. We, we talk about it often. Uh, do, do you want to be in a relationship to have these uh, these trips or does it just a, a hookup type of situation? I mean, this is an ongoing thing that you would do with your partner? Or I guess the question is like, is this something you do by yourself or with someone else? No, or no. with a steady partner. Yeah. I would, uh, oh, okay. I don't so think can I'd you do it, do with, it by myself. Right. Can you do it with like someone you're casual with or does it have to be like a long-term partner? Actually, a lot of witches suggest practicing sex magic by yourself through masturbation because no one else is involved. No one else is distracting you. It's really just about your pleasure and what you want. Um, it can, if some people feel it, it can be a little distracting. I am not a huge believer in like the rule and the rule of threes and things coming back to you and stuff like that. But some people just don't even want a partner involved if they're performing magic. If you're dating someone long-term who also is interested in this stuff, you can certainly do it together. I, I don't have any rules personally. What I think it really is up to the individual and whatever they're comfortable with and whatever their sex life is like at the moment. Right. What's an example of, would you call it a spell that you could do in sex magic? Well, an ex yeah, sex magic would be that you are masturbating while visualizing and manifesting the ideal professional scenario that you want. And that when you have an orgasm, you project all of that energy going towards that goal. Okay. So could it be like, I hate my ex and like, I want him to never fall in love with someone else again, or like put a hex on them, or that's not really 
Sorry. Or that's like dark magic. <laughs> I don't really believe a uh, light and dark magic gets into a whole gray area. I, I, I don't personally think that would be really effective. I just, you know, I also believe in science and don't think, think that's going to work. I, yeah. I find that the best revenge spells are when you're able to lift yourself up. So I would think it would be a lot more productive to use that energy to focus on finding a great partner or get or finding you know, more money, more work, and then like plaster that all over Instagram, make your ex jealous and just live your best life. I, I find that is if, if you are concerned about the morality of, of witchcraft, like not to sound like some sort of sociopath, then, you know, it's another issue, but just based purely on effectiveness, I, I don't think those sort of revenge spells, they're, they're, they're not what I do. Usually if I want to get back at someone, I just focus on making them jealous of how great my life is. Right. So you mentioned tarot. Um, I'm seeing tarot card readings all over TikTok. And I have a feeling a lot of them are not from like professionals. And can that be harmful? Because sometimes if someone's saying like, just wait for your, you know, the guy you like to text you. I wouldn't trust anyone who said that to you in a tarot reading. So that's not really how tarot cards are meant to be. There are 78 cards. They have been around for, God, millennia. They started out as an Italian playing card. And each card represents a specific archetype. That might be a major change in your life. That might be an authority figure. I don't think one needs to have any sort of formal tarot training program. I'm certainly a student just from studying myself. I primarily use them as a relationship tool. Mm -hmm. Excuse, excuse me, I primarily use tarot as a meditation tool. I find it really helpful for reflection, but I have a lot of friends who do do who do give professional readings. And in those settings, it's more, look, if a card, if you look at a card reading and, it, and it, you, you're, you read that this person is not right for you, it's because you already know that inside. Um, if things are going amazing and I mean, there is no tarot card that says, wait for this guy to text you, right. you know, you might get one that suggests patience. And if that resonates you, I certainly would embrace it, but I would never use tarot as a hard and fast rule and decision-making with, with the relationships, the people, and then the artists and the, even occultists most famous for it didn't advised against using it as a form of fortune telling. It was more um, a spiritual meditation and a reflection. Yeah, that makes sense. It kind of reminds me of astrology in that way. I mean, you're an astrologist for a few publications, I think. And um, how, I mean, how highly prioritized do you think horoscope compatibility should be? Because I'm pretty into it, but sometimes like, you know, if I meet someone who isn't a compatible side of mine, it hasn't deterred me from actually going out with them. Yeah, I would, I, you're, I think it would be very silly to turn away potential amazing partners based on their sun sign. Mm -hmm. As any astrologer would also tell you, we, you know, we have a whole chart. We have a Venus sign, which talks about how we are in love and how it comes to how we approach beauty. We have a Mars sign, which shows how we like to fight and that is a lot of um sexual energy in there we have our mercury sign which talks about how we communicate and if you really really are curious with a potential partner about your compatibility i would go to a professional astrologer and have both of your charts examined the most respected astrologers i've ever talked to though have never advised against dating a specific sign but and horoscopes you know are written mostly for fun. I'm not saying, you know, I mean, I'm a Laura's resident astrologer. Obviously I think there's value to it, but you have to keep in mind that a sun sign is a limited perspective. It's, it's helpful and it's interesting, but when it comes to dating, I would always prioritize love and chemistry. And if you're curious about the details of your astrological pairing to get a full chart comparison done. And again, that could be a very insightful tool, but it's, it's too hard to find a good partner out there to rule out one twelfth of the population. Yeah. I, th I, when I was dating my husband, we're both Tauruses and, 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 and terrible. <laughs> and the, and the, uh, somebody who was into astrology at the time said, Oh my gosh, you'll, it's a disaster. You'll, it'll never work. Well, 58 years later, 
it's still working. But the interesting thing is our first child is also a Taurus. They said, what goes on under that roof <laughs> must be just awful. And uh, we've all managed and uh, we laugh about it because we really are all the same sign. And that really is not supposed to be good. Uh, well, I bet you are good at like creating appetizer platters and taking <laughs> nice sensual baths. Tauruses are all about comfort and, and stability. You're very stubborn. So that might be difficult at times. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, I think the problems that you have in your relationship make sense with the Zodiac. Oh, yeah. Once, you know, well, if you, and you read into things though. Yeah. I mean, you know, once you've read what the qualities are, mm -hmm. like, like Sophie is saying, say, oh yeah, that's yeah. absolutely right. But, uh, you know, when you're looking for a partner, mm -hmm. I think it, uh, you're better off not looking up the signs because you'll end up never going out with them. No. No. Do you know what time I was born, by the way? Uh, I think you were born early in the morning. So what would that? So I'm a Pisces. What would that mean if I was born in the morning? Yeah, On, I think you were born I, like around you, four. You would, I need. I would need the time and the location. It's the rising sign can, you know, change every few hours. So you talk a lot about being sex positive, and I don't know what sex positive yeah. means. It's not an illness, I, no. I have a feeling. No. no, it just means that you think that consensual sex between adults is no. normal and healthy and doesn't need to be taboo, doesn't need to be stigmatized. I mean, there's people that go their entire life not living the sex life that they want, whether that means never exploring you know, a potential queer side or never trying fantasies or desires or kinks or fetish just because they think it there's something wrong with them and they don't want to talk about it and that's what they were taught and maybe they have a partner who was also taught like that and they don't feel comfortable bringing it up in their relationship so yeah sex it's just as simple as saying sex is a thing that most adults do and when it's consensual there's nothing wrong with it and maybe we should start unhinging ourselves from kind of this very outdated idea that it is something shameful to be repressed. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was it. I, I don't agree well, with some it's shameful. Religion. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, but I think in 2022, we're not, we're not, uh, it's, it's just a matter that everybody's a little doubtful about what sex really encompasses today, whether it should be, you know, we used to say sex was fine after marriage. Now it, it really is fine whenever, uh, but not for young children. Uh, so I think it, it goes in, um, it goes in waves and, and norms. And I think we have to understand uh, if it, there is a religious um, uh, prejudice against certain types of things, then it shouldn't be done if you're not comfortable. I think it's sex is whatever makes you comfortable with your partner. Um, as you were saying, Sophie, I think if you're consenting adults, if one person is not into it, then it then it's not then it doesn't work. I, I think it has to be um, something that both people want to do, and uh, there is nothing wrong with anything as long as you're both consenting. But I think like you're a sex positive person. Like, I don't know if some of your friends would say like, oh, there's nothing wrong with. Well, it's not about, I don't know if I would, I would indulge in a lot of these, mm -hmm. of these other experiences. I mean, but that's between my partner and myself. Mm -hmm. I don't think it has to be made public. I don't think it needs to be on a podcast or on Instagram. Uh, everybody's bedroom is a private affair. And I think that is what should be respected today, whether what, whoever your partner is, whatever you want to do in it, it's your business. Um, so that would be my take on it. Um, what I don't like is somebody telling me, you have to do something X, Y, Z yeah. to make it a good relationship. Mm -hmm. That that I don't go for. Mm -hmm. The relationship is between two consenting adults. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I um, have always lived my life. Would I live it a little differently now since I, I know a lot more and I didn't know it when I was your your age? Yeah, probably. Uh, but you know, that's only by experience. Sophie, you wrote an article for Forbes about risque things to do in New York City, which I thought was really fun. And maybe some of our listeners would want to go. So um, could you share some of those? Sure. Let's see. My favorite is Company XIV. That is a Let's see, the talent is just, the quality of the performance is unlike anything I've ever seen. It's a mixture of burlesque and um, ballet and performance art. And 
that's out in Brooklyn. Um, the last thing I went to of theirs was a take on Nutcracker called Nutcracker Rouge, but I would recommend any of their programming. What else was on that list? There was the Astor Club, which is a cannabis speakeasy. Uh, but check the list out. I, this city is full of wonderful things to do. I would love to end the episode with a game, Grandma Gail's Old Fashioned Dating Quiz. So we'll go through a few different scenarios and then we will deem whether you're more of a traditional old fashioned dater or more of a modern dater. So would you prefer to get a call or a text from your partner? Uh, well, if, if it, a text, if it was during the workday, a text, so I could answer it on my own time. Hmm. But do you like to get a call from from your friends? I really do. Be truthful. The whole world can't always be texting. Do, uh, do you like? To I prefer a text. I know you do, but I no, I, no, I, I am calls. being completely truthful. If it's something quick or to say hello, right. a, a text is great. If we're if we're catching up, if if it or if it's something important, if it's an important conversation, definitely ideally in person. But then over the phone, I catch up with my friends over the phone. I catch up with my parents over the phone. Uh, I just don't like getting phone calls to catch up in the middle of the work day, which, yeah. which happens a, a lot. <laughs> so would you sleep with someone on the first date? Uh, it depends. It, it depends on the person and what I'm looking for at the moment and what the chemistry is like. Mm -hmm. uh, my current partner, we waited for the third date and kind of we're both- that Magic like, third date, uh -huh. that's it. Dating apps or setups? I've also done both and had success with both. I met my current partner on Tinder. We've been, you know, we live together. It's going great. My last really serious relationship, which was also with a wonderful person, was a um, blind date, though, that we met on. So either way. Either way. Yeah, either way. Uh, move in together before getting engaged or wait until you're engaged or married to move in? Move in first. Hmm. I, I need to know if I can live with a person before I make any more commitments. Totally. <laughs> should you alternate paying for the date with your partner or should one person always just take the bill? I love letting men buy me things because I know that they probably make more money than me. I don't have a problem I, with men buying me dinner. They can pay for it all. Good okay. <laughs> You're I would say she's split. She's like, split. Yeah. She, yeah. She's not a hundred percent modern. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. A little bit about. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Sophie, thank you so much. This was such a fun conversation. Tell our listeners where they can follow you and get your books. Yeah, absolutely. The probably social media, Instagram and Twitter is the best way to keep up with me. My handle is at the Bowie cat. That's the, and then Bowie as in David and cat as in the creature. <laughs> thank you so much thank you for having me hope you guys liked the episode with sophie saint thomas i'm still not sure where the witchcraft comes in but i guess i guess if you cast a spell on somebody and they really love you that's then... not at all what she did you listen to what yeah, she said i did but my witchcraft would be casting a spell on somebody I that think i it's really love a personal love. thing like i don't think you can get other people involved yes you can okay. you can always get somebody else involved <laughs> okay also, guys, I wanted to make a quick shout out. A friend of mine is an Oscar winning director and she is working on a documentary about proposals, like crazy, fun, interesting wedding proposals um, and engagement stories. And you would be featured in her upcoming film. So if you want to have share the, any of those stories and you have any great ones, you can dm me on instagram on excuse my grandma and i can forward you her information it's a really cool project okay you guys know how to follow us on instagram and tiktok at excuse my grandma our following is growing by the minute also tell your friends about us share the podcast uh rate us five stars if you have not sometimes i think it helps to unrate us and then rate us again five stars we want to be at the top of the charts and we will see you next week bye